What up gang, pulling up to today's spot in Frisco, Texas. I'm gonna be meeting up with a few friends of mine today. It's gonna be fun. We got Colin, Bray, and Charlie on the way, if I'm not mistaken, and we have a pond that has produced in the past. Let me get in this parking spot right quick. We're at a pond that we've had some good luck at in the past. There's some big ones in here. We've caught some three pluses, but we've seen some four and fives just roaming the banks. This place is pretty crazy. They, When you see them, they see you. That's the problem. So I'm going to try and get out here with, uh, if it's clearish like it has been in the past, maybe a drop shot Texas rig. It's like, it's it's not as cold as I'm making it look like. I think the car says 44 degrees, but this cold front ripped through Texas and every morning it's been like freezing. And so I'm just feeling a little chilly today. So. Needless to say, I'm layered up. As soon as the guys get here, we're going to go ahead and toss the lines in the water and have some fun. Let's go ahead and get after today's episode. See y'all on the water. Ooh, saucy swimmer with the flashbang. Check that sucker out, that weighted belly hook with that extra little flare. Let's go ahead and try and toss this around for a second. See if we can't get hit on this before we switch to the bottom stuff. Oh, here comes Charlie right before I get the first line in the water. Dope. Have you been here? Uh, no. I've been here. Yeah, this is uh, like whenever I, I always go to Vial Lake because I'm like, okay, today's the day. Today's the day. Right. And I don't know, man. I just have. Always it's always fun. slow huh? for me. It's good for other people. I mean, there was some good chunks on there. That's why I saw it. I was like. Yeah. No. I, I mean, uh, we can try this for. People have said there's big ones in here, but I've caught like a three pounder out of here and multiple like decent two and a half chunks. So this is kind of a heavy lure too. I wonder how far I can get this. Dang, I've never casted this scorpion that far. I usually have 30 pound braid on here and I switched it over to a 17 pound fluorocarbon. This thing is getting some distance this morning. It's just on the auto brake setting as well. This The scorpion, it's imported. You can't really get these in stores like you can some of the other DCs that are more regularly available now. So um, that really means nothing except for <laughs> it's imported. But the fact is this one's got the auto brake feature like the Metanium DC, which is you know like closer to 500 bucks. So this thing's a pretty good bargain. I think it's like 250, 270. I don't even remember. Anyways, this was the first DC reel I ever got. Most viewed video was on the first impressions of this reel using lime green braid. And now we've got the floral carbon on it for the first time ever. So getting used to it. Definitely cast stellar. What's going on? Man, it's gonna hurt putting this down. This is fun casting and reeling right here. I am digging this setup, but I think this uh, scenario calls for a more finesse setup. I might try the Juicy Jig casting jig by Guggen Squad and Catchco. I will uh, link these in the description. You can buy these at Shop Carl's. That is where I get all my tackle. Save 30% on your tackle with Shop Carl's today. Yeah, now that all the grass has died off here, this is a fairly jiggy bottom. We might might possibly get picked up with this thing thinking it might be honestly it's just it's 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 very cold um, these bass are not used to this that front whip through they are chilling I'm gonna get a drop shot okay so I'm starting to rig up this drop shot tying a Palomar knot the key is giving yourself extra line you want to make sure you've got some extra line you're using on your Palomar knot that way you've got a lengthy tag in to tie your weight to otherwise it'll just be a short little distance between the weight and the hook Okay, so Palomar knots tied. Uh, simple setup this morning. We're going with a Stickies one knot wacky rig and drop shot hook. I'm gonna go with a quarter ounce Wu Tungsten drop shot weight. I'm thinking because I just wanna be able to get a little bit of distance, cover some water with this drop shot rig. So I might normally do an eighth ounce. I'm not throwing spinning gear either, a bait caster, so that extra weight's gonna help me. And then uh, just drag and drops. So, you know, any drop shot bait is gonna work. This is gonna be a short, like four inch worm. And I'm throwing the Guggen bait drag and drops on here. But so I've got that uh, Palomar knot tied and you can see I've got some extra distance here now so I can have that weight a little further down in the water. But the key here with the drop shot is actually getting your line and going back through the eye of your hook. You wanna get your line and take it back down through the eye of the hook in this direction here. That way it's pulling that hook and keeping it in a vertical position. So that weight's gonna be on the ground down here by my thumb and it's going to keep that hook vertical for those bites so you get a better hookup ratio so all right i think i got what'll do it we'll see clear water i've got them on this in the past here yeah see that's the thing they're spooky here so they'll see you like are you you're polarized yeah, yeah. Uh, i don't even have my shades i wish i brought them because they would help out but yeah i mean i was i was a uh, sight fishing them last time but you do got to kind of cast down a little yeah. bit they they usually hang up pretty tight to the wall honestly so slxdc reel helping you cast light lures like this drop shot right here I'm just gonna be working this nice and slow. 
17 pound line might be a little heavy for a setup like this when you're fishing in the cold waters you want to just be as invisible as possible i'd say something like you know 10 pound 12 pound line is just fine but i'm going with what i got so 17 pound it is yeah i'm gonna get hit on this dragon dropping baby <laughs> i've caught them on the cranks here before it's just a matter of getting to the bass before the grass gets to you because i think there's still some grass out there a little further dude that would be legit wonder where they're at cast out deep work in a few seconds then swing over all the grass <laughs> i might just be in the right spot i feel like i just got thumped too oh no man how sick would it be to pull out a four pounder on a drop shot right now I think I, I think I'm on. I might be on. It might be grass. I don't have a fish. I don't have a fish. I, dude, I might have a fish. Is it swimming? I got one, boys. <laughs> Drop shot, baby. Oh, I barely detected you, little guy. <laughs> Sick. All right, in the freezing temps. That's what I'm talking about. Out here in Frisco, Texas, making it happen, boys. Got the hogs, baby. All right, they're liking the drag and drop. Skirt! Yeah, man, sometimes that's what it takes. You gotta downsize a little bit. We got the first bite, but if we identify where a little patch of these boys might be hanging out, I'm thinking we can catch that two to three pounder, maybe even get something a little bit bigger. Man, sick. Let's go, little buddy. <sighs> Give zero Fs. Like, he's so cold. <laughs> he's like, I don't even want to swim. He probably just got shocked when I put him back in the water after being out here. Like, damn, this is nice. <laughs> Why do I live in the water? <laughs> That'll get her done in the toughest of tough conditions. Y'all want to know what to throw in the cold? Get out the drop shot rig. Bam. Watermelon, red flake, drag and drop. Quarter ounce. That's what's helping me get out there. So, look, if I was using that eighth ounce like I talk about, I probably wouldn't be getting the same distance. You can maximize your reel. Maybe you're using a spinning setup. You can get a little further, what have you. But up close I can see the grass it's just caked and y'all have been uh, well maybe you haven't seen it I might have edited it all out of there but I've been picking grass off this thing left and right the hook the weight it's just getting caked up like I say so I'm trying to get out there I'm thinking maybe I can just work it in a small zone where there's no grass built up and so I can feel the bottom I notice I'm not getting pulled with, through some heavy weight with all this junk and I've got about you know a minute's worth of retrieve before I gotta just kind of crank it in over the rest of this grass. I'm just working it very slow, kind of just letting it sit, letting them come to me. That's kind of the tactic when it gets colder. Some uh, some winter tactics out here in the fall because it's gotten so cold with this front. But anyways, let's have at it and get some more. Hard to detect these bites right now on this little thing, but we need a big one to hit. Back to back cast, back to back cast, same zone. Come on, come on baby. Oh, we found him boys, we found him. Oh, all right. I'm talking, this one might be a, this one might be a pound right here. Come on up. Yo, <laughs> back to back, and it's so cold out. They're feeding, getting ready for all this cold temperature when they're not even gonna be ready to move. Look at this guy, he's a fat so. This is probably the fattest, smallest bass I've ever seen. Wow, done like dinner. I just saved the GoPro clip too. I turned it off. The hook set was off camera because I literally just turned the GoPro off for a split second to restart the clip because I use loop mode. More on that later though. Let's go ahead and get a couple pictures of this bad boy and then get him back in the water. Ooh, smooth release. There he goes, there he goes. There he goes, he's chilling, he's going slow. He don't care either, man. They're just chilling today. I caught him on lunch break, man. I gotta get back in there before they head back to work. Right, maybe we can get the trifecta, the old three for three. I think I'm in a good spot now. I popped it a couple times and I'm not in grass. I think you just gotta get lucky and find a spot where there's not the grass and they can just see that worm, pick it up right out of the jig, right off the uh, the harder bottom like this right here so I'm just gonna leave it sitting there for a second you're always asking yourself the question like is there grass all over my drag and drop right now or does it look presentable to these fish and you just leave it sitting out there for minutes and it could be completely useless or you could get a bite so that's what I'm working with right now well I was pretty sure it was game time and now I'm having second thoughts <laughs> we can walk over there and take a gander I mean I've never caught a fish out of there though so I'm down to try it because apparently there's big ones. We're gonna venture through these trees and hit this secret pond that's no longer secret after y'all watch this video. Uh, two so far. Yeah. No way. All right, sick. Yeah, I've heard some stuff, but I've never caught anything. Oh. 
Yes, we just got verification from one of the from one of the employees, man. All right, <laughs> let's go. Yeah, let me let me hit this one time, and then. Dude, we should, uh, let's bring the yaks out here tomorrow on lunch break. Like, look, if the stories are true. <laughs> well, that was a swing and a miss. Back to the first body of water. Let's see if we can't get on a couple more. I think we're actually going to hit another spot here in a minute because um, this one has produced sub one pounders so far. Not the norm. Not the norm at all. All right, two fish so far. Not enough to make us want to stay and stick it out any longer here. We're going to go to another spot just down the street. Uh, highly popular. You guys are going to know this. It's part of a little sporting complex. Needless to say, there's some big fish in this one documented all over fish brands. So we're going to see if we can't link up with a couple more at the next spot. Let's get over there. See you then. Okie dokie. I feel like I might grab a couple more things just in case. I'm going straight for the dock. Typically what I do at this spot. <laughs> we try, I told you this one sucks. Uh. <gasps> 